Hello everybody! Today I am here with um, my art journal and I have been playing with the new Rita Bearcats um, embossing powders put out by Emerald Creek. One is the mermaid fin and it's, it has glitter in it which is you can see that you know like right there and on the the edges of this one and then the other one is dragon's egg which is a gorgeous purple and uh, that is seen on that portion of the image and around the edges and so I made these tags just kind of playing around with this embossing powder because I've never played with glitter like that much sparkle before in an embossing powder so I wanted to learn how to do it and I really love it and so I thought ooh this is another mermaid that she made and that's beautiful and she would be pretty in my art journal because I was going to do another tag with her and set her off to the side which would be super cute but I really wanted to get her in my art journal and I just went ahead and I'm going to doctor her up like I did with these girls and I just used some of the um, crystal glaze and this is truly truly not like their usual crystal drops because it actually does more like a glaze and it spreads out so as you can see I wanted her to shine so I put it all over her fins and along her um, her top and then I used just my stickles to add some beautiful glimmer and sparkle to her hair and then on this one I did her this morning not quite sure she's dry I did the basically the same thing on her as well and then I just added a little bit of my uh, crystal, I don't know if it's crystal glare or crystal glaze. I think it's more like a glaze, but it looks like it's glare. I just added a little bit to her pupils just to make her eyes shine. And then of course I did use some crystal drops to add some extra dimension and texture like little bubbles. So I thought it would be fun to create with you today in my art journal. Um, a fun technique I actually kind of wasn't and these these tags you guys I was actually inspired by the mixed media Monday in July I think it was the 23rd 22nd of July uh, Rita did um, some beautiful tags and I was like oh that's so cool so that's where my inspiration came from it was actually from her so this isn't really a unique idea um, it's not like I had like this brainchild so I'm just gonna use my mixed media Dina Wakely journal I'm gonna find a blank page in here um, as you can see, I like to just experiment on the pages. And, ooh, that's pretty. Okay, so I'm gonna use this one. And this is a watercolor paper. And I'm gonna use some fun acrylic watercolor paint. Now, this stuff is so cool. Cause it goes on like watercolor, like watercolor, right? But then when you set it, it's set. Like it's not going to blend anymore. And then I'm gonna use, so I'm gonna use this in pastel turquoise turquoise and then ultramarine which is almost like a purple oh I got a little piece of bling right there <laughs> so I'm gonna start with the lightest medium dark and go on from there and then once that's dry I'm actually gonna add some color shift to it and this is aqua flash so we're really going for an under the sea uh, under the sea type theme and once I'm done I'm gonna add some embellishment to it now don't freak out, but I'm going to use my fingers on this because um, that just works best to blend. I don't know. So I'm going to go through quite a bit of, you know, um, baby wipes to clean my fingers between. So I'm just going to go on through and just rub it in. And I'm not really caring if I end up getting it on other pages because, I mean, this is an art journal and I kind of like that look that you can get when it, it goes into like over here and I'm, I might just use that this is actually a canvas sheet over here to kind of wipe off the excess 
Ooh, you know what might be fun? Is if we take it and we press it like that. Ooh, that's going to add some fun texture too. Now, the reason why this canvas is smaller than the other sheet is when I went ahead and glimmer misted this, I did not prep my surface. I didn't use a gesso. So, um, it is smaller it shrunk which is normal and I wanted that to happen so it's all good this is just my journal play really all right so I put on the pastel uh, turquoise and now I'm going to add the regular turquoise and just the same thing again I'm just gonna use my fingers kind of blend it in as you can see it's it looks like a watercolor it's just all kind of blending in really nicely Add a little bit more and I might hit this with my heat heat gun for a few just to make the colors kind of pop on this all right so let me go ahead and just hit this with a heat gun real quick I'm gonna do this technique again Take, rub off some of that excess on that sheet that's not entirely dry but it'll be cool because I can add on um, some of my ultramarine onto it and kind of blend it through and this this by the way this is by folk art I don't know if I said that which is a division of plaid paint that's who came up with this beautiful watercolor type paint Okay, and then I thought that I could blend in some of that turquoise again into this. Actually, I want to get that edge a little bit. There we go. So, I just didn't want to use a paintbrush today. You know what else would be cool on this? Like one of those little spatulas. That'd be fun. Then I am going to blend in some more of that turquoise into this, kind of rub it throughout and we'll dry it and then we'll put some color shift on it. I'm loving how that looks right now. So I'm going to go ahead and just heat set it and then I'm going to put some color shift on it. Now, if you just want to use your color shift, um, you're going to, it, it it's dries, it doesn't dry with that much coverage so you can see through it so make sure that whatever your base is is what you want to be seen kind of through the color shift all right now there are still some wet patches and I left it like that on purpose because I would like to see how it moves I like it to make it move you know with the new paint blend and move and just you know that looks really pretty so this is a beautiful it's gonna add a beautiful shimmer to this Can you see how shimmery and pretty that is? It's so gorgeous. I love how that looks. Isn't that a beautiful background? And if you want to know what I'm going to do over here, I don't know yet. <laughs> I'll figure that out later. <laughs> um, but I do like to use, like I said, sheets in my, my journals as cleanups and the cleanups end up being pretty cool later on down the road to build on. So that'll be a great base for something later on down the road. I just, when I do my cleanup pages, I always make sure that they are in the same color family as the page I'm working on. Like I would never take a red and put this over here because I believe that this is water soluble and that will make mud. So just, you have to keep your color family you have to keep your color family in mind. So I'm going to add this stamp. This is an art foamy stamp and it is the, I believe it's the Zen Doodle Cloud. It's the cloud uh, that Rita Bearcat created. This is a fantastic stamp because even though it's a cloud, you can use it 
on smaller projects like this. I use this stamp on this and you would never know that that's a cloud. It just looks like some beautiful swirls. So I thought that this would work really well with an under the seam theme. If I go ahead and I stamp kind of on the bot on like the corner over here and then I'm going to put my girl, you know, kind of like right over here. So I, that's what I'm going to do is I'm going to like stamp this to be an underwater, um, like a wave. We'll see if that's the result that I get, but I just thought that that would be cool. If not, it'll look neat. See, so this is all about play right now. I'm gonna go ahead and use some pigmented ink and in white. Um, you could use just embossing ink. That would work wonderfully. However, I wanna make sure that I see where it's placed and it's not like a guesswork when I go to heat emboss it because I am gonna throw um, the dragon's egg on this. So I just wanna make sure that it is I know where it's going, basically. All right, so I love these art foamies because you can use um, paint on them, pigmented ink on them. You just don't want to clean them with anything other than a little bit of warm soapy water uh, because like the chemicals could hurt it. So we don't want to do that. So I'm going to take my art foamy buddy the stamp buddy and I'm going to place it with the um, foam side down and press and what this does I usually don't have to use these but it does allow a nice even coverage and you know that you got it on right okay so there's that that looks cool okay and then I'm just gonna take on this corner and oop, I'm just gonna put a little bit over here, like so, to finish it off. Okay, and now from here, and I might add some on the top too, I'm not quite sure yet. I'm going to take my Robin's, my dragon's egg, and just going to emboss it. Really, I should do this over a piece of paper. That would be way easier. And what I'm trying to do right now. But the good thing is, is I have my craft mat down. So if I spilled any, I can go ahead and just get it right back. I don't waste any of it. Want to make sure that you use a pigmented ink and not an alcohol ink to do this or else it'll dry on you and you won't be able to emboss it because what's happening right now is this embossing powder is attaching itself to that wet ink and if it has nothing to attach it to then it will just fly right off and I am kind of trying to move the embossing powder off of my workspace because if I have anything wet on my workspace it will emboss and attach itself to that so and really the best way to do that is with a dry brush so if you just take a dry soft brush and just go over your work area and anywhere that it did not pick up and you wanted it to or you didn't want it to you just go over it it'll work perfect all right, so I'm going to go ahead and heat set this and you'll know that your image is embossed when it goes from this matte powdery look to a shiny glossy look. Oh, look how pretty that is. Oh, love it. Isn't that lovely? So pretty. So I was, I was going to maybe do like an offset of it up here. And I'm thinking that I, I might do that. I think that would be pretty if I just do an offset of it at the top. Let's 
you dump your whole container on this, it's okay because you're going to save it. We're going to go ahead and watch how little this actually used. Look at this. Okay, so this is your container, right? Check this out. This is so cool. And I, my container I've used on as you, the other projects as you saw, plus I've used it on two other projects. So I've used this a lot. And I just take my brush to make sure, and this is really important when you use the mermaid fin, and I'll show you why, because you have glitter at the bottom. So you want to make sure you get all that glitter back out. Um, this is just because I don't want to waste it. Look at that. Look at how much we have left. So it lasts a while. It really does. So don't freak out if you dump the entire thing on your project because you can just save whatever you didn't use. Isn't that pretty? So pretty. Okay, I'm going to go wash this in just some soapy water, and then we'll be back, and I will... Actually, before I do that, I want to lay my mermaid out, because I'm going to be using on her to get to set her in to this book, this regular... Uh, gel semi-gloss and this is a sealant and a glue and so I'm gonna set her in to the book oh I think I like her right there so what you're gonna do is I'm just gonna take my finger and just rub it all over the back make sure I get it it, it doesn't matter if it gets onto the paper because it dries clear and kind of want it where I'm gonna put her also and then I'm just going to lay her out like so. And she just, then I'm going to take and just apply more of the semi gloss over her. I like using my finger. I discovered that when I use a brush, or um, the brush can actually get ruined by the semi gloss if you don't clean it in time. And sometimes I don't. Even if you leave it in water, um, it, it can it can still like set in there and get residue. So I like to do it like this with my finger. And if I use the sponge applicator, oftentimes the sponge sucks it up. So I use way more than what I really need it to and I go through my product quickly. So I'm gonna let that dry for just a second and then I'm gonna go wash this and we will apply our bubbles next. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and add on some bubbles, and I'm going to use the Magical Mysteries Mermaid Fin. This is going to be epic. So I'm going to take adhesive dots. Basically, it's double-sided tape that's cut into circles. You can do this yourself. I happen to have some in my stash. So I'm just going to do this from my stash. Actually, so I'm just going to lay out these first. Just going to pour a little bit of this on here so I know where it is. Now, I'm gonna use my finger to rub this into each of the spots. You have to be careful when you do this that you don't touch your eyes or sneeze or have any kind of cir air circulation going on around you that can blow this around because you do not want to get to have this in your eyes. But the best way to get the embossing powder attached is to press it in with my finger. It works better than anything else. So I am just pressing this in with my finger. I'm going to make sure that I take and just really, really wipe my finger clean. I'm going to wash my hands before I even touch my face. 
And then I'm going to take the excess of this off, dump it right into here. There we go. And then I will take my brush and just remove some of the excess that's on around the area. Not that having a little bit of excess bling is a bad thing. <laughs> I just want to make sure that you can tell that these are bubbles, like circles. That's my goal right now. Okay. I'm going to heat set this. We're going to watch the magic happen. So my bubbles are done. I love how that looks. It's so pretty. And now I'm going to go ahead and just finish off this page by adding my sentiment and giving her some, just jazzing her up a little bit with some um, stickles and some of the glaze. Okay, so here is the journal page. It still needs to dry. And again, I used these little gals as my to try on, and I really love how they turned out. And this is the journal. I, as you may have noticed, I had tried to put this on her eyes and I just didn't like it. It got too gloppy. So I took, um, my wet wipe and just removed it. So I think that'll be dry nicely. Anyway, make sure that you guys head on over to the Rita Bear Cat blog because there are a ton. It's a ton of inspiration and there's just lots of fun eye candy over there. I love it and I love her style and her whimsy. So um, yeah, head over there. And then on Facebook, she has Get Creative with Rita Bearcat. It's fantastic. So go check that out and join it. She does a mixed media night on Monday nights live and she sets the timer for like 30 minutes and she creates projects. Um, and they're really good. I always learn something from her. So go check those out. Please share this video if you enjoyed it and you think someone can benefit from it. Also leave any comments down below and give it a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe if you haven't done so. Until next time, happy crafting.